Watch OS tutorial, we are going to get familiar with Apple Watch input interfaces. As I mentioned before, depending on the watch capability and the user's settings, there are at least four input interfaces that we can utilize to create a new note. To trigger these input interfaces first, we need to tap on the text field. By doing that, the watch operating system will bring us all available options to enter some content. It could be a feature to dictate, scribble, or enter emojis. But not only that, we can even type some text from our external devices like iPhone and iPad as well. Let's give it a try. First, we're going to try how we can dictate using the Apple Watch, shall we? This application gets better and better. Awesome. Now let's try out the second input feature. As you can see, we can scribble something on the Apple Watch screen, and the Watch OS automatically try to recognize and convert it to letters if it's possible. Not bad at all. Now let's see how easy it is to add some emojis from the whole emoji catalog. C. Easy PC. The last feature is directly typing from a previously paired iPhone or iPad. Unfortunately, we cannot test it in the watch simulator, if I'm not mistaken. You need to check it out yourself on your real devices. Believe me, it's so cool. Okie dokie, enough with the talk. Open Xcode, and let's get started coding along with me. Data model. First, we start with some housekeeping. Select the content view file from the project navigator, and let's create a new group from the selection as I do. Give it the name, view, and save it. Nice. After that, we're going to create another group for the data model. Give it the name, model, and add a new Swift file to this group. Its name will be Note. After saving it to the group, we will create a new data model for the note structure. Enter the following code. Struct. Note. Identifiable. Codable. Let. ID. U, UID. Let. Text. String. And. That's it. We have just created a new model with an identification number and text properties for the note struct. Since we are done with it, let's select the content view file and keep coding there. Text field and button. First of all, we need to mark all the main possible coding sections for this file beforehand to keep track of what's going on later. These areas are the following. Property. Function content body, and finally, the preview. All right. After that, we're going to create two new properties. One for the notes and another one for the text field. Enter the following code. At state. Private. Var. Notes. Type of an array of note. Equals to an empty array of note. Next, enter at state private var text type of a string equals empty string with two double quote marks. So far, so good. Now, let's embed the placeholder text into a new vertical stack container, as I show you. Enter vstack new comment the end of the vstack. Dot, navigation title. Notes. As you can see, we not only created the main content wrapper, but we added a new navigation title to it as well. And? It's the first time when we can see our previously created accent color C in action. But we don't stop here, so let's continue adding more views to the layout, shall we? 
Next, we will replace the text with a new horizontal stack container. Enter this piece of code. HStack. Alignment. Center. Spacing. 6. New comment, the end of the HStack. Now, we need to add a new text field and a button inside this horizontal stack container. Enter the following code. Text field. Add new note. Text. Dollar sign, text. After adding a text field, we will continue with a new button. Enter. Button. New comment. Action. Label. Image. System name. Plus. As you can notice, both the text field's appearance and the button are totally different on Apple Watches than on iPhones and iPads. The operating system describes how each user interface element should look on each Apple platform. Keep in mind that these two UI elements are quite different on the watchOS platform than on the iOS and iPadOS counterparts. The next thing worth mentioning is the following. Since we put the text field and the button beside each other in a horizontal stack container, therefore their width is identical. To change this default behavior, we need to add a specific modifier to the button. Add this new view modifier to the button. Fixed size. Great. Another thing that we can do is to add some color to this button and make it live. Enter. Button style. Bordered button style. Tint. Accent color. If you can recall how the buttons look in the workout application on Apple Watch, then you are spot on. But to be honest, I don't think that this design is suitable for this Notes app. That's why I will show you how we can customize the look of this button so you will know multiple ways to do. Does it sound great? I hope so. Now let's do it. Comment out this button modifier, and let's add new ones to it. Enter the following code. Button style. Plain button style. Yep. You're right. It will make the button look plain. And that's a great thing so that we can customize how we really want later on. First, we will make it in yellow with the accent color modifier. Enter. Foreground color. Accent color. Second, we need to change the system image with this. System name. Plus, dot, circle. There it is. Just one more thing. Font. System. Size. 42. Weight. Semibold. Yeah, it's much better now. That's what I was talking about. Now, back to business. We need to push up this text field and button combo to the top with a new spacer. Let's add this after the H stack. Enter. Spacer. Great. I think that we should test what we've just developed so far. Let's do it right now. Testing. After launching the Watch app, we need to test the input interfaces by tapping on the text field. As you can see, we got all three options there except the typing mode from iPhones and iPads, but that's fine. Choosing one of the emojis is the easiest way, in my opinion. Now, what about scribbling something on the screen? It's totally doable, don't you think? And finally, we will create a note by saying something using the dictation feature that watchOS provides us. By the way, this is my favorite input feature. What is yours? Let's build an Apple Watch application. All right. So far, we have added these two interactive UI elements to the top of the home screen. However, when we tap on the plus button, it does literally do nothing. 
In the second half of this tutorial, we will add some functionality to it for sure. Buttons action. Making the button useful for us, it's not enough to say that we need to save a new note on the watch. That's why we need to think about all potential steps that our code should do step by step. We have just all agreed on the final goal, but can we declare all steps in plain English what the code should do to accomplish this complex task? It's time to make a list that will declare all parts of these algorithms. This activity, in computer science, is also described as making pseudocode. So let's get started. The first step in this action is the following. Only run the buttons action when the text field is not empty. It follows the second step. Create a new note item and initialize it with the text value. Then here goes the third step. Add the new note item to the notes array with the append method. After that, this is the fourth step. Make the text field empty. And finally, here comes the fifth step. Save the note with the help of a new function. See? Knowing what our code should do step by step beforehand will make our job much more straightforward than writing codes mindlessly. I hope that you agree with me. That's being said, without further ado, let's start making it happen. Algorithm. We start with the first operation, following by the other ones. Enter the following code. Guard. Text. Is empty. Equals to false. Else. Return. As you can notice, this one line of guard statement replaces the use of a complete if-else statement. If the text field's value is still empty, then our code will stop running in this action. So, the rest of the closure's code won't be executed since we escaped from it. How cool is that? Now, let's look after the second step. Enter. Let. Note. Equals to note. ID, U, UID. Text. Text. We have just assigned the text field's value to the recently created note property with this code. Nothing fancy there. What about the third step? Enter this code. Notes. Dot, append. Note. Since the notes property is an array, therefore we can append the new note property to the end. The fourth operation couldn't be more effortless. Enter. Text. Equals. Empty string. See? I've told you. Now, let's see what we can do in the last part. First, we need to create a new function which job will be to save the notes to the local storage. Enter. New function. Save. Hold on a sec, please. I would like to point out that we couldn't cover how to save the notes without covering how to retrieve them from local storage. And since it would make this tutorial extremely lengthy, therefore we should focus on finding a quicker way to do the job. Don't forget that at this point, our goal is to call this save function each time when the user creates a new note and be sure that this algorithm works well without any glitches. What do you think about the possible ways to do that? That said, wouldn't it be great if we could print out somehow in the console the notes and make sure our code logic works correctly? Yes, you are 100% right. We can use the print method for that, but I would like to introduce you to a slightly better way to do that. First, enter this code inside the function, shall we? Don't worry. We will discuss how it works later on. Enter. Dump. Notes. And, that's it. This one line of code dumps the given object's content in the console. In this particular case, we should see all note instances passed out as values in the console. To see how it works in action, we need to build and run the Apple Watch project on a real device or in the watch simulator. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the console window is visible. OK, my console is visible now. Just one more thing. 
Please navigate to the bottom part of the code, and let's create a new text view after the spacer as I do. Enter. Text. Backslash, open parenthesis. Notes, dot, count. Close parenthesis. As you might figure it out, this simple code will let us know the total number of notes in the array. Just saying. Then all we need to do now is to call this new function at the end of the button's action. So let's do it. Enter. Save. It's as simple as that. All right. Now it's time to test the notes app again and see how our code works. Let's build and run the watch app. After the launch, please add some content using one of the given inputs. Xcode Editor. Nice. Now let's add this to the notes by tapping on the plus button as I do. Did you catch what's been changed? Yes, the number increased by one. Now, let's continue this process and add more content to the notes. Standalone Watch Application. Splendid. We have two notes already. What about adding another note to it? Super duper. Our code seems to be working. Of course, it won't save the notes to the local storage, so when we close the watch application and reopen it, then we will see zero notes on the screen. As I promised before, we will make it work in the following tutorial. Finally, if you still have some doubts about how this code works or want more feedback, then we need to jump back to Xcode and check out the console. Here they are. Can you see the notes array in the console? I hope so. As you can notice, all properties are dumped out clearly and concisely, like the ID and the text values. How fantastic is that? I hope you pick up this new method and use it in your development toolbox from time to time. Stick around and see you in the following video. Until then, happy coding.